something must be happening over at Hacker Way because this isn't normal. Budget cuts or misdirection? I don't know. Meta must be on fire right now. Welcome to Wednesday News Day, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. It's finally time. Connect just happened, and we've got a lot to break down. Sorry for my scratchy voice, I do have a little cold, but I just had to do this video after watching Connect. The Quest Pro has finally been released, but uh, we gotta talk. Things are a little different at Meta right now, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting a little worried about them. But HTC may be back in the ring with something big coming from them soon. Free full body tracking is on its way and RuneScape just sponsored this video. No, seriously. RuneScape is no joke my actual childhood. I remember staying up all night anytime I had the chance to play and it's something I've always held really dear to my heart. So when they offered to support my channel by talking about some cool updates they've been pushing with RuneScape, I was absolutely down. And oh boy, RuneScape has evolved since I last logged on and it's looking pretty darn good. In case you don't know, RuneScape is a very deep massively online multiplayer game with quests, dungeons, bosses, skills, and of course, tree chopping. And right now they're doing a pretty sweet Fresh Start Worlds event just for members that offer servers with wipes, something that totally changes the MMO dynamic. In my opinion, in a good way. It's a fresh MMO feel with classic roots, giving you a chance to experience all the fun of a fresh launch with everyone on the server at the same time. Then you can even take that character to the main server, actually pretty smart. And in case you're wondering why I'm talking about a flat screen game on a VR channel, well, think again. Of course this isn't officially supported, but I never ever thought that I would be playing playing RuneScape with a VR headset on. But here I am. So put on your mithril armor, use the links down below, and hop in. Thank you again RuneScape for supporting this channel, but we have a lot to cover so let's just get right into the news. So Meta Connect, or as some people are calling it, Meta Disconnect. Let me just preface this a little bit. Connect is an event that happens pretty much every year for the past nine years, and at this event there's a pretty good mix of gaming, consumer, AR and VR hardware information, enterprise, sneak peeks at future projects. It's usually a pretty decent mix of things to get everyone excited about the next year of VR. And the only thing I can really take away after this Kinect is that things are just different. But I can say pretty confidently that Kinect may just not be for us anymore. At least this one wasn't. This wasn't an event to get people excited about VR or to announce some big projects. It's, well, let me just explain what happened. We finally got an official release of the MetaQuest Pro. And it's pretty much everything that we expected. Really looking like a pretty awesome headset. Four times the resolution of the Quest 2, pancake lenses, 12 gigabytes of RAM, an upgraded Snapdragon XR2 Plus processor, color pass-through, ringless controllers, it looks great. But it's pretty darn expensive coming in at $1,500 for pre-order that will ship in just a couple weeks. But it's simply not a VR headset with consumers in mind. Even though typical consumers can use and buy it, it's really built for enterprise and work solutions. Which pretty much sums up all of Kinect. It wasn't for us at all. And in general, the whole conference was just weird. In terms of gaming anything, which I know this isn't and wasn't a gaming focused event, but pretty much nothing was announced. The Quest 2 was hardly even mentioned besides some fitness applications and a couple trailers for games that we already knew were coming. We also got this few second trailer for... I don't even know what this was. What was that? There's no Assassin's Creed or GTA, nothing. And I think Meta is in pretty obviously a weird situation. And I have a feeling that it's starting to really affect the company internally and externally. Whereas last year's Kinect was this mic drop metaverse moment that the whole world watched, the heat and blowback of that Kinect pretty drastically affected the tone of this one. It was almost entirely business talk. To sum it up, they announced a partnership with Microsoft, the previous partnership with Qualcomm was mentioned, the capabilities of pass-through and mixed reality were glanced over, but I think the biggest moment was when Meta announced an open ecosystem, showing that they have very obviously pivoted from a lot of their original plans. That they want to be the Microsoft to OS X, or the Android to iOS. And this just goes to show how different meta really is now versus one year ago. And I'm gonna be totally real and honest. Meta looks like they're in trouble, and even if you can't see it on their faces, you can see it in their stock price. This whole thing was very obviously an appeal to shockholders while being as sure as possible that they don't get memed for it. And I'm about to give you my initial reaction and thought, but part of this could be totally wrong, so don't take this as fact, but really, meta is in trouble. Even just on the VR side of things, the entire 
entire industry has a loaded gun pointed at the company. The Federal Trade Commission is hot on their heels for anti-competitive practices, their stock price hasn't been this low in years, and competition is lining up and so many of their projects have failed or are failing. The most recent news articles are about how Meta can't even get their own employees into their own VR social app, and their original attempts to foster a much more closed ecosystem have all crumbled. The Meta operating system was canned last year and their own custom silicon seems to be down the gutter as well. But this isn't negative. All of this is good. For us, the industry, it's even good for Meta. Let's be totally real. Meta have not played nice, and they haven't been very smart. Removing Oculus from everything was stupid. Being anti-competitive to so many companies practicing a buy and bury strategy isn't good for growth for themselves or VR. And being the only company able to compete in a segment means that you're also the only target. I think that this whole year has been a kick to the balls for Meta. And this is coming from someone that loves the Quest 2. I love that so many people have been able to get into VR because of it. I love Beat Saber, I love the whole industry. But all these things that have added up that I've been complaining about for years are now starting to really bite them in the butt. It's not my fault and it's not your fault, but there have just been so many fumbles. So, in my opinion, this may be a changed meta. It feels like they have hard pivoted from building their own ecosystems with their own operating system and silicon and hardware to instead working with the entire industry to bring VR to the future. And I don't think it's because meta wants to, it's because they are gonna have to. And I really, really hope that their future moves are closer to what they've been doing recently. Driving the industry not through control and buying everyone or outcompeting everyone to the point that nobody can compete, but by forming partnerships and working together to make VR better, more useful, and have more applications as well as fostering a more competitive environment so the entire industry can grow, not just Meta. At the end of it all, this connect wasn't bad, but you can tell that Meta is drained. And I'm not sure what's going to happen next, or if it's even going to happen, but I think we're about to see a much more friendly and industry open Meta within the next few years. Maybe even a Meta redemption arc, we'll see. And I think if any of you have known my channel or watched my channel for any period of time, you'll know that I do not hate Meta or Facebook or Oculus. I'm only critical because they have done bad things that I disagree with in the past. They haven't been very nice to the industry. Yes, you might have a cheap VR headset, but that doesn't mean much if the industry's dead. However, I love what they do, and it's honestly sad to see Meta this way. It's like watching someone trying to walk after getting hit by a bus. I don't know, like I said, it's just weird. And maybe Kinect just isn't for us consumers anymore. Maybe we memed it too hard last year. Or maybe it'll be better next year when there's more consumer-focused things. But like I said, I think we're about to see a very different Meta in the near future and in a positive way. And for Meta's sake and for the whole VR industry's sake, I truly hope that that is true. But now it's time for a meme break. Quest users once Valve drops a standalone with Half-Life Alex as a launch title. And now, back to the news. So, many of you may remember way back when the entire industry was basically Oculus versus HTC, with the original HTC Vive and Oculus Rift duking it out way back in 2016. And well, over the years, things have changed quite a bit. In general, HTC has just sort of fallen out of the consumer market after blunders like the Vive Cosmos, a headset that suffered from a lot of problems, and of course, the Vive Pro 2 not quite meeting expectations, and the more recent Vive Flow receiving pretty mixed reviews. But just this week, HTC revealed a teaser for for a brand new VR headset using the caption, go small or go home. And I think once I explain what could possibly be going on here, this whole prospect of a new headset from HTC is really exciting. I'll start with their current big projects. First, the Vive Flow that released last year. That headset is basically one of the smallest and lightest VR headsets ever made. And when I got to try it, I did end up liking it, but it's weird. It's expensive, only three degree of freedom, and really just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But we did get to see firsthand that HTC knows how to make a pretty good, very small VR headset. And on the opposite, side of things, the HTC Vive Focus 3 is without a doubt my favorite standalone VR headset ever made. It's comfortable, really high resolution, has good battery life, supports all sorts of fun things like Wi-Fi 6E, a face tracker, eye tracking, it's a cool package, but it's just not made for consumers. It's built for enterprise, including its price, costing significantly more than the Quest 2 or Pico 4. But what would happen if you combined all of those attributes into a headset built for consumers? A powerful headset with a good resolution, with expandability, and a 
small size. Well, that's just what this headset may be, as an extension of the Proton project. Not to mention, HTC already has their own store built up in the form of Viveport, which instantly puts them quite a bit ahead of someone like Pico, at least for the time being. Of course though, we'll just have to see what this thing is in person, and see how much it'll cost. I'm hoping for a sub $600 high resolution expandable Wi-Fi 6E color pass-through and well, just fix the mic please, the Vive mic sucks. <laughs> Do all of that and we'll definitely be talking. So I've said it a thousand times and I'll say it a thousand more, but I'm a massive fan of full body tracking for VR applications. For me and a lot of others, it cranks up the typical level of VR immersion and interaction to a whole different level. And I firmly believe that full body tracking of some sort is the future. But right now it's expensive on the consumer side and hard to incentivize developers to implement. But imagine a world where you can have most of the benefits of full body tracking all without trackers. No cameras, no base stations, and really nothing else extra. And that's where this project, a full body estimation system called Standable comes in. This is actually a system that people can use and run right now as well as implement in their games to not only have better full body IK that makes games look better, but it can also be used to emulate something like full body trackers for any VR headset in the future. And looking at the comparison, Standable is a surprisingly good full body estimation system that probably offers around 30% of the full body experience that a full tracker setup would allow. But obviously this doesn't work for movements that are unpredictable, like picking up one leg at a time. But for everything else, it's pretty awesome. And an exciting step forward for good looking and more importantly, feeling full body IK and presence within VR. Definitely go check them out. This one's short, but basically Valve is looking for software engineers for a new VR headset. Don't know what this is. Some people are saying new headset confirmed, but we don't know when that's ever going to happen. Could be two years, could be tomorrow, could be, I don't know, 10 years. We're all on Valve time here, but of course I'm excited for it. So we'll see. So I know that there are a lot of people that watch this channel that want to get into the VR industry in some way, shape or form. And really anybody can do it. It's all about getting connected and inspired in the right way. And recently the MC Summit was just announced. Basically the summit being an AR and VR conference for anyone interested in the XR industry. Really, it's just a one day event put on so that people wanting to get in can connect and learn through this virtual conference. And coming up next month, MC Summit is bringing in a bunch of people, including myself to talk about the VR industry and give chats about specific topics. And just like I said, connect people. It sounds like fun and just a good idea. And the whole thing is free for anyone that comes from the Thrill Seeker community. So if that sounds like something you're into, sign up forms are down below in the description. And hopefully I'll see you at the conference. So what did you think about this year's Connect? How do you feel about Meta? Could this actually be a real redemption arc? Is this positive or negative? Let me know down below. And also I want to say thank you to everyone that showed up to Rift, the IRL slash VR event that we threw. It was a massive success during TwitchCon and we just had a blast. Also congratulations to ShelterCon for having an amazing event as well. It's kind of crazy. I never imagined three years ago that we'd be able to host IRL events and have people come together, which is especially important right now because things like Connect just aren't happening physically anymore. But I do want to say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you. And don't forget to like this video if you loved it. Subscribe if you want more of this and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love. Thrill out.